Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror and thriller film called I Spit on Your Grave. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Jennifer Hills, a novelist from New York City, travels to Louisiana to write her second novel. Along the way, she stops at a shop to get the keys to the cabin she'll stay at. At the shop, a man named Earl hands her the keys before instructing her how to get there. According to Jennifer, the purpose of her trip is for some peace while she writes. On the way there, Jennifer gets confused about the roads, so she pulls up at a gas station for some help. There, she meets Johnny, one of the attendants, who points which direction she should go. Johnny attempts to make a move on Jennifer, but she scares him after accidentally pressing her panic button. He spills a bucket of fluid, causing Andy and Stanley, his friends, to laugh at him. As Jennifer drives off, Johnny's embarrassment is evident. After the long stretch of road, Jennifer finally arrives at the cabin, which will be her home for the months to come. She immediately unpacks her belongings, ready to embark on a change of environment. The following day, Jennifer relaxes by the lake after days of working on her novel. She hears suspicious noises but does not pay much mind to them. However, the noises reoccur and make her uneasy. Jennifer walks across the nearby shed to check, but she finds nothing but bottles of poison inside. She accidentally spills her drink onto her clothes and goes to the kitchen to wash off the stain. In there, an unknown person is secretly documenting her half-naked. The following day, she jogs through the woods and stumbles upon an abandoned cabin. Out of curiosity, Jennifer enters to check how it looks like inside. However, she does not find anything interesting and continues to go about her day. Back home, she discovers that her sink and toilet are clogged, urging her to call a plumber, Matthew. He suffers from a mental disability, hence his stuttering way of talking. After he fixes the problem in her bathroom, Jennifer gets giddy and gives Matthew an abrupt kiss. For a moment, the shy Matthew blushes and runs outside because of it. In the woods, Andy, Stanley, and Johnny hang out and kill birds for fun. The brutality is recorded by Stanley, who has a passion for documenting anything random. Not long after, Matthew arrives and tells the group how he received a kiss from Jennifer. Johnny does not believe him, but Stanley confirms that it is real before showing a video of her in underwear. At nightfall, Jennifer still hears the creepy noises around the house and becomes more bothered by them. She sees a lifeless bird just outside her door, but other than that, she finds nothing. Upon returning inside, she sees her laptop with the group photo of the guy she met days before. She looks at it in horror before realizing that they are inside. Johnny? Stanley, and Andy taunt Jennifer all together, causing fear to the poor lady. Stanley calls Matthew, and Johnny drags him inside so he could also participate in their scheme. As the leader, Johnny initiates the group into threatening and letting Jennifer drink. When she refuses, Johnny becomes more agitated, leaving her no choice but to abide by his orders. He then asks Jennifer to show him her teeth and pulls her closer. Johnny pulls out a gun and forces it on Jennifer's mouth in a sensual manner. Andy approaches her and does the same thing, but with liquor, while Johnny forces Matthew to watch. Jennifer finds the courage to hit Andy's knee before Pepper spraying Stanley. It allows her to escape into the woods and run to safety. Jennifer bumps into Stork, the local sheriff, along with Earl. In tears, Jennifer informs the two men of the assault that she has experienced recently. Stork calms her down by showing his badge, informing her that she is now in safe hands. The sheriff tells Earl to go home as he will accompany Jennifer back to the cabin. Moments later, Stork drives with Jennifer back to the cabin to confront the group. He bravely calls them out while looking for them inside the cabin. Upon examining the scene, Stork finds the broken bottle of alcohol in a joint belonging to Jennifer. He begins to interrogate Jennifer despite her pleas for help as if she is not a victim. According to him, she has no right to make false accusations about the men he knew since they were kids. Stork then orders Jennifer to face the window as he pats her down. However, he touches her improperly revealing that Stork is the group's accomplice as the boys enter. While Stork points a shotgun at her, he orders Jennifer to get on her knees. Johnny picks her up while ordering Matthew to remove his pants. At the moment, Jennifer is helpless, to say the least, with five heartless men, her chance of survival is at stake. Stanley records the whole thing while Matthew begins to force himself on Jennifer until he is satisfied. Despite being weak, Jennifer manages to gather her strength and get out of the cabin. Further into the woods, she stumbles upon the group again, where more sufferings await her. Andy drags Jennifer near a puddle and submerges her head a couple of times. As she lays on the ground, Stork removes his pants to force himself on her, ignoring her cries for mercy. 
After the men take turns on Jennifer, she gains consciousness and is now covered in dirt. Jennifer gets up once again to go further into the woods in the hope of some real help. Still unhinged from the hell she has been through, she reaches the bridge while the five men continuously follow her. Just when Stork is about to shoot her, Jennifer lets herself fall into the river, leaving no trace. The group searches for her, but they have no luck tracking her body anywhere. As an alternative, they destroy evidence left behind, especially Stanley's recordings. After the eventful day, Stork returns home, where his wife and daughter, Chastity, welcomes him. As if nothing happened, he spends the night at home without any remorse for his actions. The next day, Stork stops by Earl's shop to return the keys to the cabin, saying that Jennifer left without notice. Weeks pass, and the group goes on with their lives as if nothing happened. Apart from the rest, Matthew is the only one that feels remorse and spends most of his time in the woods. One day, he gets a vision of Jennifer staring at him in a ghostly way. Matthew covers his eyes out of fear and gets under the idea that Jennifer is haunting him. While Andy and Johnny are hanging out for some drinks, they see Stanley running toward them. With worry in his voice, he informs the voice that his camera has been stolen before revealing that he kept the controversial tape. Johnny gets in a fit of rage and starts beating Stanley up for putting them at risk. That night, Johnny hears noises outside his home and checks outside to find a dead bird on the porch. He kicks it off before returning inside. When he goes back inside, he hears it again and comes out with a gun. To his surprise, the dead bird is lying on his porch once again, the culprit unknown. When Johnny hears it again, he rushes outside to see Jennifer's slipper on the porch and tries to chase the sound but to no avail. Meanwhile, Stork comes home to his wife, who informs him that a package has been delivered. To his horror, he finds one of Stanley's tapes and is relieved that neither his wife nor daughter has seen it. Stork quickly drives off to meet with the group, who are nervous to see him. Immediately, Stork threatens Stanley, thinking that he is playing a prank on him. To defend his friend, Johnny shows the slipper, suspecting that Matthew is responsible for everything. On their hunting trip, Stork hands Earl a bottle of whiskey and shoots him. The reason behind it is Earl is one of the loose ends to the crime, as he saw Stork accompanying Jennifer back to the cabin. Still troubled by his visions, Matthew returns to the cabin to reflect on his actions. Out of nowhere, he hears Jennifer's voice calling out to him, so he comes inside. He ends up falling down the stairs and knocks himself out. As he gains consciousness, he sees Jennifer in the flesh, sitting on the couch. Jennifer invites him to sit beside her, and he repeatedly apologizes for what he did to her. Matthew clings to her while sobbing as guilt overtakes him. Jennifer comforts and calms him down but later puts a noose tight around his neck. Matthew continuously says sorry despite gasping for air, but Jennifer replies that an apology is not good enough. The resurfacing of pieces of evidence prompts the group to look for Matthew in the woods. After several minutes of searching for him, Andy and Stanley end up in an abandoned cabin. Andy enters while Stanley remains outside to search for any signs of Matthew. There, he shockingly sees Jennifer standing across him, giving out a smirk. When Stanley advances on her, he steps on a bear trap that she set up and calls for Andy, who gets hit with a bat. Both of them lose consciousness after Jennifer also hits Stanley. After some time, Jennifer ties Stanley to a tree and records him with his camera. She brings out a dead rodent and shoves it in his mouth, which makes him vomit. Jennifer then sets up the camera before using fish hooks to keep his eyes wide open. While recording him, Jennifer guts a fish and spreads its insides all over Stanley's face. The scent of the fish guts attracts numerous crows that begin to peck him. After some time, his eyeballs are eaten by the birds, and he bleeds to death. Meanwhile, Andy wakes up inside the rundown cabin, tied on a few boards over a bathtub. The water in the tub keeps rising just as Jennifer enters to check on him. Andy begs her to let him go, but she is sure about inflicting the same torture that she went through. Jennifer repeatedly submerges his head into the water before throwing in some lie and removing one of the planks. Andy is left with no choice but to hold himself up with all his strength to stay up, but his body eventually falls into the water. Because of this, Andy's face is eventually burned, causing death upon him. The following day, Jennifer stops by the local gas station where Johnny works. She seduces him by wearing a short skirt and attacks him the moment he comes close. As part of her plan, she brings him back to the cabin to release her wrath upon him. When Johnny gains consciousness, he finds himself tied to the ceiling without any clothing. His torment begins when Jennifer pulls out his teeth one by one using pliers, making him realize his mistakes. Jennifer brings out a gun and forces it on Johnny's mouth, just like what he did to her. However, he manages to laugh, which makes Jennifer more agitated. Using hedge clippers, she cuts Johnny's private part before shoving it in his mouth. 
he screams in terror before eventually bleeding to death. Finally, Jennifer is down to her last target, Stork. The sheriff receives a call from his family, receiving news that Chastity's teacher is at their home. On the phone, Jennifer greets Stork, leaving him in a state of disbelief. Out of concern for his family, he quickly drives back home, only to find out that Chastity came with Jennifer. Stork arrives at an empty playground with his daughter still out of sight. Worries start to overtake him, and he runs back to the cop car, where Jennifer knocks him unconscious. Upon waking up, he finds himself inside the cabin with a rifle shoved inside him. Showing no mercy, Jennifer talks about how nice Chastity is and how he could stomach assaulting a woman. She shoves the rifle deeper, causing unimaginable pain to the sheriff. Across the room, Jennifer reveals that Matthew is alive but unconscious. A string attached to the trigger is tied around Matthew's wrist, which will kill both men if he moves. At this point, Stork desperately begs for his life, but Jennifer completely ignores him. Unbothered by his cries, Jennifer walks out of the cabin, patiently waiting for the situation to take its turn. Matthew eventually wakes up, urging Stork to calm him down. However, Matthew's mental incapacity causes him to panic and unknowingly pull the trigger, ending their lives. Outside, Jennifer realizes that she has gotten her revenge, and she celebrates with a faint smile. After experiencing the worst kind of torture any woman could imagine, Jennifer refused to let the men win. She took matters into her own hands and inflicted the pain she thought the men deserved. Throughout the story, every man received similar torture to what they did on Jennifer. In the end, Jennifer turned her pain into power. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.